Hey, welcome back. So today we're going to have a little bit of fun and we're going to hook up AI agents to a very old protocol, the Telnet protocol. Now, if you've never heard of that before, it's from 1969. It was one of the original protocols, RFC 15. In fact, a guy called Stephen Carr wrote RFC 15. Um, and it's a protocol used to hook up remotely to network terminals. Super cool. I'll bring up the paper a little bit later on. But we are going to hook in from our agents using MCP, Model Context Protocol. So I built an MCP server which can speak Telnet and our AI agents can talk to it. So before I show you the agent working, I'm just going to do a very, very quick demo of Telnet so you know uh, how it works. It runs on your machine. So pretty much every machine runs Telnet. So you can just go something like Telnet and we will go to time.nist. Gov, and I'm going to specify uh, port 13. So, and you will see it connects there and it gives me the current time, which is 1607. Pretty cool, right? And there are still some old Telnet servers kicking around. So, if I Telnet this time to uh, telehack. Uh, com and we go to port 23 uh, you can see I'm hooked in like so cool it's so retro isn't it and there's lots of cool commands here so uh, for example I can do uh, cow say moo and then you see the moo and I can get a clock it's super cool isn't it so and then we will just disconnect that so as you can see it's super retro it's a very old protocol um, but there's still this kind of underground community still using it which I think is super cool but as you can see it is a language based protocol. It's built into your machine. And I think that makes it uh, super relevant for AI agents. So before we go into a little bit more details of Tauna, I'll just show you quickly uh, a MCP server that I built. Uh, which will allow you to connect up to this. So to get started, I'm going to use my MCP CLI. You can literally download it. It works with all Llama. It works with the OpenAI based models. Uh, all the instructions are there. You just really need to do a git clone, Chris Hay UK MCP CLI, and then uh, you can uh, run the CLI and good to go. Um, I'll show you it running and then I'll show you the config for this a second and then I'll show you the MCP server. So if we just run this for a second, I have an MCP server called Telnet that's available on my repo as well. And then we'll just do literally the same demo that we did a second ago. So this time I am going to say uh, connect to Telehack on port 23 and tell me what we can do. Um, so it's going to come back and it, we should get a list. You see it's calling the kind of Telnet at client tool. I'll show you that tool in a second. Um, and there you go. You see it's came back. It's connected to Telehack port 23. And um, you know, you see games and then it's got things like cow say. So we can say, uh, we'll just do cow say moo. And then hopefully what should happen is it will connect back up to telehack there. And then uh, we should uh, get a beautiful cow say moo there. And we can also say cow say fish. Just to be super clear what's going on here, my MCP CLI is using uh, GPT-40 mini as the model there. And then it's got access to some tools. So if I click on uh, forward slash tools there, you can see there's three tools available. Telnet Client, Telnet Closed Session, and Telnet List Sessions. They are exposed on my MCP server. So if we go to Chris Hay UK and we go to the uh, Chuck MCP Telnet Client, there's an overview of it working there. But you can see it's a generic Telnet MCP uh, server. And anything that can speak MCP, it will be able to will be able to talk to this. So you can use Cloud Desktop, whatever. Or you can use Client. It doesn't really matter. Um, and all that it's going to do is use this Telnet Client tool that I've defined. And of course, you can see your sessions, closed sessions, whatever. And it can connect to any Telnet server. So if I want to, I could say connect to um, time.nist.gov on port th 13 and get the current time. And then you see it's going to come back and it will uh, get me the current time. And there you go. So the current time is 1614 uh, UTC. So as you can see, I think it's super cool, right? Here is a protocol which is really about making virtual terminal connections, um, which is fully text-based. All right, security is not the biggest thing. It's been replaced these days by SSH. But actually, if you think about what large language models need to do, we're talking about things like playing games, etc., cetera, um, being able to go interact with different commands, you know, like the cow say, a clock, whatever. Um, I think there is a place for Telnet in this AI agent world. So if you want to understand what's going on underneath the hood with Telnet and why I think it's useful, 
is when I make the call to telehack.com on port 23, you can see there's a little bit of a negotiation that's going on. So it's trying this uh, here and then I'm connected and then it tells me a little bit of notes, the escape character is blah, blah, blah. And that is part of the protocol negotiation. So what's actually the cool thing about Telnet is there's a little bit of no negotiation between the client and the server to say, what type of terminal are you running? What do you support? Are, who's doing the echo? Are you echoing characters back? Am I echoing characters back, etc.? And that's what's happening in this little bit of the kind of negotiation at the beginning. It is a basic TCP connection. And then you see the first command that happens is this IEAC do echo. And then it comes back and says IAC will echo. So that's the first part of the connection. It's like, are you gonna be, who's responsible for echoing characters? Am I echoing characters or are you echoing characters? And then once it's negotiated, you can see you've got a sort of normal TCP connection where you can send uh, uh, data back and forward. I send a welcome message, I can send help. It's just TCP in that sense. As I said, security wise, it's since been replaced with things like SSH, but I think there's still a use. If you look at the connections there, there's a whole bunch of commands, IEC, interpret as command, don't do this, I will do this. So you are basically just saying uh, negotiation between client and server, who will do what? And I think that's at the heart of this. And again, you, I've given a list here, but you get the idea of the sort of thing here, you know, whether it's things like echo or whether it's you're going to be on line by line mode or character mode. Um, I think a lot of that's not relevant these days, but I think there is probably a relevance of, of the future. And again, if we look at the original paper from 1969, you can see there, in addition to a user program access, a convenient means for direct network access from the terminal is desirable. A system called Telnet is promoted which is a shell program around the network system primitives, allowing a teletype or similar terminal at remote host to function as a teletype. So let's take this a little bit further. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna, um, we're gonna create a couple of custom uh, Telnet servers and you'll get the idea of how sort of simple this is. So I created a um, protocol server here for a second. So if we look in here, um, you are gonna see, this is uh, something called Chuck Protocol Server. In here, I've created two very, very simple servers. So um, we can ignore the config there, but this is an echo server, and I've made this as super simple as I can, um, but you can see it's a, an echo service telnet hand, handler, and all it's gonna do is echo at whatever you kind of push in there. And then I've created another one where you can play guess who. So here you can see I can bring this down into a single uh, uh, file basically. And it really is just focusing on the game logic. So you see all the names for guess who, there's a question, is it a man, is it a woman, do they have glasses, do they have that or whatever. Um, and again, these are sort of very simple command line text kind of programs. Um, what I've also done with this server is I've made it so that it supports not just the Telnet protocol, but it can also run Telnet or TCP both over the Telnet TCP protocol, or it can run over even WebSocket. So let me show you what I mean by this. So we are gonna launch, let's, um, so let's launch the Echo server first for a second. So you can see I've just ran my uh, launcher there. It is now running. So if I go over here and I say something like Telnet um, localhost, and I think I'm running that on port 8023. So if I go to port 8023, um, you can see I've now connected welcome to the Telnet server. It's done some negotiation. I can say help and then I can say uh, let's do uh, hello world and you can see it's echoed back hello world. So let's just exit out of that. If I then change this, so let's come back into this. It's the same server for a second. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch this from being the echo server to the guess who server and then we will connect back up. And now if I telnet back in again, you can see 8023 is now doing a guess who game. So if I say start, uh, actually we can look at the commands first, let's do a help. Uh, is it a man, is it a woman? So it gives me all the commands. So we'll say start. Uh, and then you can see we can now guess the game series. So I am gonna ask it a question like, let's say do they have glasses? So we'll run that. 
uh, and you see no is the answer and then I'm gonna cheat here and I'm gonna say guess Alex and sorry that's in connect the character was Alfred so I'm just it's really simple for me to create uh, new servers so we'll just uh, quit out of here um, but as I said before, if you don't want to connect over direct telnet, I've made this so it runs also over things like web sockets. So to do that, I have created a little uh, web terminal here. Um, as you can see, it can connect to localhost. It allows you to do web sockets. So if I just change this to port 826, the reason I'm changing this to port 826 is I'm running web sockets there directly on port 826 for telnet. So if I just uh, connect into, and we're gonna port connect into port 826, I'm gonna click on direct WebSocket connection. I'm gonna force Telnet in this case. And then if I connect on uh, connect, I am now talking Telnet over WebSockets, which is pretty cool. And then we can just uh, do start and we can play the game again. I will say guess Alex. Uh, and again, incorrect, the character was George. So we have this ability to easily create uh, Telnet over WebSockets now, which deals with the security side of things. If I want to, I can use this to proxy to other servers. So let's take off direct uh, connection and we're gonna put in here, uh, we'll just disconnect and we'll just put in here telehack.com. Uh, we are gonna connect on port uh, 23, if you remember telehack was on there. And now I'm gonna proxy on port 820, 81, 25. To proxy, I have another tool, another server called a Telnet proxy server. All you need to do is launch Telnet proxy server. Again, it's in my GitHub, etc. I'll put all of the links in the comments. So Telnet proxy server is now running. And if I want to, I can now connect to uh, Telehack from the web here. Uh, and again, if I do clock, you see the clock is running there. So I think this is kind of super cool. Um, again, a little bit retro here, but as I said, the, the purpose of this wasn't for us to go and play on kind of Telnet over the web, etc., which is useful. Um, the purpose was really to think about model context protocol. So let's come back to our MCP CLI. We're gonna do uh, one more test. This time we are gonna connect back up to Telnet. And this time I'm gonna set the model to being GPT-40. And the command I'm, and the prompt I'm gonna give it is play a game of guess who over Telnet on localhost port 823. Remember I am running um, my server here on 8023. So we can just clear this, it'll make it a little bit easier. It's running on 8023, there is Telnet directly. So if I say, don't ask me questions, you play and let me know the result, you will need to use the same session ID throughout the game. So if we just run that for a second, and you can see it's connected to Telnet client and it's going off and it's playing the game here. And if we look at the over here, so it started a game, secret character is Philip, but look, it's already sussed it. So it's, it's when, is it a man? Do they have facial hair? So we can sit and watch the log. This is an AI agent. This is GPT-40 playing, guess who, over Telnet just using the MCP server. Okay, and you see the connection is now closed. So if I come back into my shell there, it says, I played a game of guess who on the Telnet server and here's the when. The character was male, they had facial hair, they did not have blonde hair, they were not wearing a hat. Uh, the, I guess, Max, but unfortunately the correct uh, uh, character was Philip. Now. If we play this a couple of games, let's play this again. Uh, we'll just say play another game. Um, uh, you know, sometimes it wins, sometimes it doesn't. And there we go, we played that game here. In the second game of Guess Who, I successfully guessed the character was Peter, asked a bunch of questions, and then there was only one character, Peter. It took uh, seven questions. And again, we can check the logs here to make sure it didn't cheat. The secret character was Peter, did all of that, and it got it correct. So I think this is my general point. So although we focus on things like function calling, AI agents are really good with text. So actually just being able to host very simple text-based uh, services, kind of old style terminal based, where the AI can interact back and forward, but actually giving it the ability to maintain a session. So you see the tools that I had available in this case was a Telnet client, a closed session and list sessions. So just by giving access to essentially three tools, the ability to connect up to a Telnet server, to be able to close the session and be able to look at its active sessions, 
it is able to play a very, very simple text-based game. I've not had to teach it anything about it. It Once it knows how, to, and it's just using function calling over an MCP server, um, but then it kind of nails it. And again, if we can look at the conversation here, so if we look in the tool for a second, we can see what the AI has actually done to get here. So if you look at kind of tool calls there, you see 31, 31. So it's just making tool call after tool call uh, uh, to, to play the game. But I can look at something in particular. So we can go, um, let's look at conversation. We'll pick uh, 41. Uh, you can see here tool calls is passed in its session ID. Here's its question. Uh, do they have white hair? See, it's, it's keeping track of its session ID. It's passing in so it knows to, to play the same game over and over again. Again, if I change this to 43, you know, see that same session ID. So it, it knows it has to maintain that session ID to, to be able to play there. And then it's uh, made its guess there, which is Peter. If I look at the earlier commands there, you see it, this is where it's did the question. Do they have black hair? And then the response is coming back from the MCP server. No remaining characters or friends, da, da, da. So because this is a very textual game, I ask it a question, comes back with answers, it gives it more information, it gets added to the context, it is able to just uh, sort of play the game. And again, all that the AI is needed in this case, it's not got any super complicated system prompts, it's just access to the MCP server. Um, you know, the, the MCP server knows how to speak Telnet, which is uh, which I just kind of showed you there, and then it's able to interact with anything. And I guess that's um, that's sort of the key thing. If you want it super easy to, to hook up MCP CLI or any other um, uh, MCP client, you literally just need to do a UV pass in. Um, in this case, it's Chuck MCP Telnet client, and then you just need to um, call the main.py. The uh, MCP client is up there, so if we go to um, Chuck MCP Telnet client. Um, you don't need to do anything. You can just run this and then the model is going to pick it up uh, from there. So you can, as I say, the instructions are there. You can just kind of get clone it and then you can run that. And again, if you want to um, create your own games there, then we have the um, Chuck protocol server, which is allows you to sort of create these very simple kind of games there. And I've also created here, you can see in Chuck Telnet servers, if we have a look in here, I've created a little stock server. Um, these are kind of more simplified examples in this case. Uh, and again, you can see that to create Telnet servers, you just need to uh, create very, very simple programs. Give it a nice simple config, you know, what protocols it wants to run on. Again, all the instructions are there. And then you can go and create your own Telnet servers. You don't need to worry about any of the complexity. So I, th I think this could be a good medium to be trying AI out on different things and be more general. Um, so hopefully you will go and have some fun creating some Telnet servers or hooking up uh, the Telnet client to other things. But I, I do think there is a place for something like Telnet in the AI agent world. Um, and it's maybe just a different way of thinking about things. Anyway, hope this video has been useful and I'll catch you on the next one.